Well, welcome everybody to our Job Nimbus 101 workshop. We are so excited for you all to be joining us today. Today, we are going to be talking about what's new in Job Nimbus. And what's new? The forms feature is new. We are going to be talking all about that and we're gonna get right into it. I'm Dan. I'm Logan. Thanks so much for coming to be with us today. Now, I know that the roofing industry is a busy one, it's a volatile one, and it's fast paced. And you can't always count on having the same people year after year, or sometimes even week after week for some of your positions. And that can lead to a major drain in institutional knowledge, where not everybody knows every question that has to be asked everywhere you go, every photo that needs to be taken. And that can lead to extra trips out to job sites and other things that we're not really fans of. So we've made a solution for that and we call it our forms feature. Effectively what the forms feature is, is it's a way to create checklists or different kinds of questions and photos that need to be taken that your people out in the field go through step-by-step -step on their mobile devices to make sure that they're getting every single thing that you need to make sure you do the job in a way that makes you look like a hero and uh, also puts a little bit of cash in your pocket. And today we're gonna talk about exactly how to create those forms on the web app, how to use those forms on the mobile app, and then how to view those forms on both the web and mobile apps. To create a form, you'll need to use the website application. So go ahead and go to jobnimbus.com, log into your account, and then click on your profile icon up here, select settings from the drop-down menu, and then click forms from the settings menu. This will take you to the forms tab. To create a form, simply cr click the Create Form button. First thing you'll need to do is give your form a title. It can be anything, make sure it's descriptive for your team members so they know which form they're going to be using. I know Amazing Form isn't a great title, but we're gonna put that right now because this is going to be an amazing form. If you need to describe it further, go ahead and use the description field. Then you'll want to add your sections or questions to the form. The type of the type of sections that you can add are checklist, where you can add in multiple options for your team members to check multiple of those different answers. This can be used for selecting different hazards around the house. We can choose a date, such as when the roof was last installed. We can choose a drop down or a multiple choice. These are practically the same, where you can add in multiple options like the checklist, but your team member will only be able to choose one of those options, one of those answers. This can be used such a, for questions such as when, a, what type of roof it is. Now, the difference between these is if you're only going to have a few options for your team member to choose from, we suggest using multiple choice. But if you're going to have a whole bunch of options, use the drop down as this will save space on your form and will be easier to scroll through those different options. We can add in a number such as the square footage of the roof, a paragraph or a short answer. This will allow your team member to type in an answer to the question. As you can guess, short answer, they can only type in a short answer or a paragraph, they can type in a novel if you really want them to. Or we can choose a photo. Photos will allow your team members to use the camera on their mobile device to take a picture of the damage. Once we select what type of section or type of question it is, we then can give it a title or this is where we can ask the question that they're answering. We can further describe the question here in the optional description field if needed. We can then mark it required. This will make it so that the team member will not be able to go on to further questions until this one has been answered. We can copy it. This will duplicate that section. We can even delete a section if needed or we can click this plus button right here to add in an entirely new section and choose what type it is. Once we have multiple questions or sections on your form, we can rearrange those by clicking and dragging them to a new spot. Once you have the form exactly how you want it, go ahead and click save form, and then that will show up in the forms tab in your settings. As you see here, we have already have a few forms. So let's go ahead and show you how you can fill out forms. So I'm inside a contact already and I'm ready to fill out a form. The first thing I have to do is I'm gonna hit that blue plus button over on the right hand side. It's gonna ask me what I wanna add. I'm gonna choose form. And then I have to select the form from the list that Dan showed you earlier. Uh, since this is a webinar and we're testing things, 
I'm going to choose webinar test. And then it's going to bring me right into asking questions. The first kind of question we have here is a date. You'll see that it's marked optional. And so the blue next button at the bottom right is available. I can just skip this if I wanted to. I'm not going to. I'm going to add the date. And then I've got a few options here. I can just mark it as today in the left hand side. I can scroll through months and years if it's something old. I can even choose if it's going to have a time attached or not. Uh, I don't want a time attached. I don't need to select anything off this calendar. The date of the inspection is today. And then I'll hit next to go to my next page. You'll see this one is required. And so the next is grayed out. I can't actually click that. You're going to hear me click that maybe. doesn't work. I have to uh, select, is there visible damage? I actually have a building I'm looking at right now, uh, and there is visible damage. This next area, this is a checklist, so I can choose multiple things off of it. I've got spiders and rats available. Square footage of the roof. You're going to think this is weird, but it's actually 132 studs. Uh, and then it's going to ask me for a photo of the damage. Now, whenever it asks for a photo, there's also a button for not present. So even though this is marked as required, I can say, you know, this isn't present and I can skip it to the next. Uh, but we do have damage here. So we're going to add a photo. And the first thing you'll see is, hey, if I had photos that I'd already taken for this contact, I could just add them right there. I need to take a photo though. So I'm going to hit the photo button and let's take a look at our building. There it is. And uh, yep, visible damage right there. Uh, goblin attack, these things happen. And I'm going to take that photo. I'm gonna mark it up just in case anybody missed it. Uh, there's a big hole in the wall right there. And I'm gonna turn that red. Then I'll mark it done on the left-hand side. I'm gonna hit done again. And I'm gonna close out of the camera app with one more click on the X. Then it will already have marked the photo that I took. That's great. I'm done. And I'm going to my next question, description of the damage. This is a short answer. Uh, the answer is goblin blew up a wall. You hate it when that happens. And finally, I get to review the answers that I've made. So I can tap on any one of these and it'll pull up exactly what I answered. If I want to change any of the answers now, this is the time. And then I can submit the form. Once I've submitted, it takes me automatically to a view. And here you'll notice a few places that I put in descriptions. A test form for the webinar at the top, that's a description. And on the any visible damage question, there is also a description there. If I want to see that again later, I can tap on the forms about the middle of the page. And it'll allow me to look at my completed forms right here, but I can't edit them after they've been submitted. We can also see these on the web app because you don't want to just see this on the mobile app. Here I am in the same contact. And once you're in the contacts file, go ahead and click on the forms tab. You'll see that that one's new and you'll see all the completed forms in for that contact right here. To view a form, we can click on the blue numbers right here or go ahead and click on the three dots and select view. Here we can view everything that we saw on the mobile app just on the web application. This is a great way for your team members to communicate with your office admins. Once they fill out all the questions out in the field, it is and save the form, it is automatically viewable for your office admins. Now the forms feature is a new feature in Job Nimbus and as such, we love hearing your feedback. If there's anything that you want to see different in the forms feature or something that you want added in a later iteration, go ahead and go to your forms tab in settings and click give feedback. Here you can type up any feedback that you have for us and it goes right to our developers. They see it and they will look into seeing if they can add it into forms at a later date. If you have any questions at all, about how to use Job Nimbus, go ahead and uh, look at our knowledge base articles at support.jobnimbus.com. Or if you want to call us, there's our number. You can talk to a support rep, and they're more than happy to answer any questions that you have about Job Nimbus.